the nice thing about low sulfidation epithermal systems is we have a pretty solid model on how how they develop but in the case of shovel nose itself we actually have a a, a preserved model of what what one of these deposits look like and that is the south zone at shovel nose it is a fully preserved epithermal chute or system or deposit or however you want to characterize it i think it's fair to point out that i think one um comment that we that we hear about shovel nose is that it's it's a heavily glaciated area and therefore everything is eroded and and uh, and there won't be any more discoveries possible and that, that's simply not true south zone is fully preserved it gives us the base of the system the main mineralized system and the top of the system that doesn't have as much gold mineralization in it but has all of the alteration pieces that we want to see we can use that to determine what is sort of the size the physical space that the south zone takes up in order to uh, to to target our exploration and then it also allows us to look at um, the structural areas that we talked about on the previous two slides and then now layer on what do we see in terms of clay alteration geochemistry and veining so clay alteration these clay minerals they're just minerals that form from the epithermal systems they come up a structure they alter the existing rocks and you and you get these these clays and and you get very specific clays depending where you are in the epithermal system so agillaria is really Really what we see right in the heart of the south zone right where the 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 gold mineralization is and and the resource is located below that we see potassium feldspar uh, crystals within veins which is really important i think it's a it's been a well documented story how peter fischel our chief geologist at west west haven in the early days was looking at results of drilling within quartz veins seeing these potassium feldspar crystals and realizing from his past experience that that meant we were below the system and needed to drill upwards and and above where those current drill holes were and that's how the south zone was discovered by drilling above where he was seeing these crystals so we can use this model now to look at a property scale Look for areas where we have these northwest trending normal faults or interpreted faults or constrained or, or, or in some cases we have them now defined, um, maybe where they're influenced by these north these later or sin uh, movement um, northeast trending faults, and then layering on our mineralogy and our geochemistry. So here we just see it's kind of a schematic way, but areas where we we think we're seeing um, some of these parallel northwest trending faults. We can layer on, in this case, we're looking on the right side, we're looking at a gridded image of antimony from rocks at surface. Um, so we see these really high pink areas um, where they overlap with some of these interpreted structures. Those are targets. Those are areas that we need to to, uh, to be drilling um, to look for that that next that next discovery. So with some, some of our disclosure, we've called these sort of step change, change targets. It's really just a, a term we're using to, to get away from that more incremental approach of drilling and, and really looking to try and, and make new discoveries.